Welcome Bruce. back, everybody. It is our second series of the day. And Phoenix, who lost against Fnatic 2-1, to one, will now face up against TNC in an elimination match. Winner is out of Epicenter qualifiers. The winner goes on to the grand finals to face up against uh, Fnatic. So, it's going to be an interesting game, that's for sure. The first series <laughs> between TNC and MVP have MVP Phoenix coming out on top two to one. Ten seconds remaining. But uh, TNC definitely put up a good fight. They've made it all the way Five here. I think they're remaining. pretty impressive. So uh, definitely going to be a fun game. March is going to be joining me Reserve once again time. for this series. March, what's up, buddy? Uh, nothing much. Just uh, enjoying the games, I guess. I think uh, you know. I was talking about it with uh, with Durka. A little bit, and it and it seems like MVP Phoenix just seems off. Uh, Durka casted MVP Dangerous Phoenix, losing Phoenix. to Warriors. Yep. Um, team pick. They got knocked out of the ESL one qualifier from that series. We now see MVP Phoenix in our bracket potentially to be knocked out today out of um, out of Epicenter. What do you, you think is going on with this team? Because they like looked great on land, but uh, Durka, Durka, the, he said, like, you know, a, everyone just seemed a little bit off. And Ten I feel like from remaining. this, the last series, I felt like most notably QO looked the, the most off. What do you think is going on? To be honest, it's like, this is normal. <laughs> and like, how time. they play in the land is they're just playing out their old, they're all playing out their A games. And to be honest, like, off uh, online when they play from home and they. Just play online. They usually make a lot of mistakes, and they—I don't know. That just seems normal. To, this just <laughs> seems normal to me. Uh, but I'm sure, like Phoenix's turn to pick. I'm Volcar. sure they—they'll like, uh, they'll come back. They'll come back. Boarding games. Phoenix's turn to ban. All right. Well, it's do or die. And MVP Phoenix have started off with an opening that. Well, we both Dyer thought was back. pretty good opener for MVP Phoenix in game number one against Fnatic, but we saw how that went. Earth Spirit and Invoker. <sighs> this is TNC's Vengeful Chen. Phoenix's turn yeah, to Yeah, I, well, I think it had to do with uh, mid lane when like, three heroes were there not being able to crush the Zeus. <laughs> See, that was the biggest problem. Uh, they were, they were kind of expecting to dominate the mid lane and then... Ten seconds uh, remaining. They play on from that, but like it didn't really happen, and Zeus so got too much of the game. That's why they lost the game, I think. Reserve time. You know, looking back at it, it's funny. The uh, there's the Phantom Monster ban. PNC, they they actually got beat out by MVP Phoenix in game <sighs> number three of their last series um, because of Dire the two O Phantom Monster that um, drafted. Seems to you be know, a really appropriate yeah. response that's come out of uh, the Southeast Asia region. You know, actually, Tihi is the one who started the Invoker, uh, the PL mid against Invoker, and then Ten he's the one who taught Q that. Now both teams have been able to uh, adapt to that, remaining. and it's even spread outside of the region. Yep, and uh, like uh, the I didn't get to finish this, but the MVP Phoenix stole a lot of strat strategy from the uh, TNC, where you know. MVP plays a lot of Furion. They, they were really successful with it. Being aggressive with it. It was uh, TNC who started first against MVP Phoenix in the Drums. scrims. And Joggernaut like mid is also pick. what Tihi specializes in as well. Might be Joggernaut mid as well, actually. Yeah. TNC, they, uh, they seem to really like their weird core mids like the, like the Juggernaut. They used to run they a lot of uh, Clink's mid as well, like uh, Clink's mid and Terrorblade mid and uh, PL mid were there, like, and Juggernaut mid were there, like, special. Shikiro mid? Seconds but I haven't seen that, but... Uh, uh, I can't see teams try that. Reserve I was just like, I'm, I'm not a fan. I, I'm, I'm guessing it has to be working in scrims, but every single time I've seen it in officials, Complexity run it, um... He ran it in, against MV Phoenix. Dyer I remember Team watching that game. Um, there was a game recently, was it yesterday? Where we had another Juggernaut mid. Uh, TNC, did they play it actually? 
the match against Maneski, I'm presuming. Yeah, 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 it was TNC who ran it. That didn't work Phoenix out. It was just like time pick. and time again they uh, they they try that out. It mm. must be working in scrims. I just have yet to see it work well in official. I think it can be good against a short range, but against long range, I'm not sure. What do they use it against when they pick it? Um, OD is one of the pickups that they they tend to draft against, right? Because if you think about like the the attack speed slow Ten against an OD. Remaining. Makes uh, a decent amount of response. And the Astro Imprisonment can be also good enough for the, the OD uh, uh, Drakir itself as well. Oh, they're going for Sven instead of uh, Usabek. Do you like that pickup? Uh, I, I think I like that pickup a little bit more against an OD. I like that very directed Ten physical damage remaining. that can potentially kill the OD before he gets anything off. Yeah, actually, like, uh, like, I know a lot about BB, so Bristleback, like, you don't, you don't play Bristleback against OD. You know, safe, like, they're probably, if uh, it was, it was a with BB, Phoenix they would have probably put the OD in the back. safe lane. And then BB cannot do anything against it. So. I think that's why Dyer they did it. Team pick. Well, Beastmaster going to be banned away yeah. by TNC, Beastmaster by MVP. Beastmaster is a good counter against Sven, because Roar goes through the BKB, and then Roar slows the Sven, so it's pretty a smart ban. Heroes left for Sam H. I know Ten he plays a lot of remaining. off in Quap as well, but Five seconds remaining. this might not be the... Best game for it. Because the Quap generally is not used anymore, and they used to use it a lot with the Draw Ranger, but Draw Ranger is not there. He is also famous for Fury, which is banned. And. I don't know. Tide Hunter and Dark Maybe Seer are still in the pool. Do you think MVP Phoenix is likely to take either one of those? Dark Seer is probably going to take taken by MVP Phoenix. And Bork plays both of the heroes really well. He likes both of the heroes. <laughs> For TNC, I don't think I have seen them use much darks here or the Titan the Hunter, so... Curious what they pick. Chanter is not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Phoenix first thing. But yeah, not a whole left on on the table here for Sam H to play, to play aggressive with, but there's Phoenix an offlaner definitely can play aggressive uh, the Slardar. I had to say, but, Sam H is one of the more entertaining offlaners that I've seen in a while. He he, oh, he goes in, man. He <laughs> goes in. But like Slardar, like I know TNC used to be really good with this hero, and then Slardar didn't really get nerfed. But the thing is, like you pick Sven against Slardar to counter the Slardar, and then Kind of shows the remaining. limitation of the TNC zero pool, I guess. Five seconds remaining. They they are not like, at the same time like Tide Hunter and uh, Dark Seer are not so great Reserve with time. TNC right now with the uh, as far as the uh, hero positions. Dark Seer, uh, Dark Seer being picked up by uh, MVP Phoenix. All right, pretty good call. Here, Earth Spirits, uh, Vacuum mixed with the Sven Stun, and so the EMP. Oh, they're using the OD safe lane and then you're gonna mid against Invoker. Actually, if I were MVP Phoenix, I would say like, I would just go mid with, uh, with safe lane with Invoker, uh, Earth Spirit. Or potentially Darkseer and Earth Spirit during off lane to harass the. Uh, because Chan's gonna be in the jungle. And Sven and Wisp can deal with Wisp, they're gonna really well, I think. Deal. Ten seconds remaining. Yeah, and then Invoker would match up really well one on one against the Sardar. Five seconds remaining. And yeah, once again, if uh, goes extra with Invoker, you can certain stuff. But seeing the MP's item, but the MP is the one with right now. Prepare for battle. All right, matchup against Juggernaut, who has already gotten the poor man shield plus fairy fire. Will be. 
Oh, oh and for then, an early smoke up. I think uh, if uh, OD leaves with the Astro Imprisonment followed up by the Blood Earth Stun, it's a guaranteed kill. Try and get uh, a quick mid ward up. Oh. Hey, they're gonna cut across here. No, they're gonna go for MP. That is definitely a surprise smoke. MP was not expecting that one at all. Be a quick first blood to TNC's favor. Well, wow, how did that work? <laughs> I have no idea, but. <laughs> themselves some quick golds pretty necessary the slardar will be able to have boots pretty quickly and uh the regen situation is pretty interesting because the chen went uh wards boot first so winter g over here the only bit of tangos that they had between the two supports and the mid laner presuming he's going to give some of his tangos to tihi mvp phoenix gonna try and battle it out Probably gonna oh, go for the Stormhammer the stun begins. and try and pick up the Bounty Rune, or not. Uh, they back themselves oh, away. That's a Bounty Rune pick up on both sides. TNC. Very excellent start for them now. Very smart choice. Uh, Art War Devara is gonna win the room fight no matter what because of the Astro Imprisonment, and they smartly take the both throughs. And because MP is sta starting without a. Uh, Bonnie is he's gonna be tough for a pinch a lot against Juggernaut. Tihi will be able to pick up uh, pretty fast healing ward if he needs it. Bottom lane, they're gonna try and go on Sam H, who's already got his boots. Pull him down with the tether. They hit him with the slow. Still staying ahead of him, Sam H finally throws out the stun. It seemed like forever until it finally went down, but uh, could be good now. Takes a lot of damage in the process, though he'll be forced to use his healing salve, which is exactly what MVP Phoenix wanted out of this. Play a lot of Invoker, I think. Uh, if Invoker goes Wex against Juggernaut, he doesn't do anything. Yeah, I'm inclined to, to agree with you. I think he um, needs to go X Earth, I think. Well, at the very least, have higher impact on the side. Rev is not quite able to pick up his level two. The OD was able to get two to nine, so no so, uh, fast level diver. Rev looks like he's going to try and pull the hard camp, but that'll probably be blocked up at the bench. The four is not going to happen. So much hard time in this all lane, so he can get so much. But at the same time, he can get easily killed if he if he surges and then, then gets at him imprisoned. The surge is gonna wear off, and he's, and he's just gonna get right click to the death. But like, as long as like, he pushes out all the waves all the time and safely farms, like, he, he should be okay in this lane. I like this concept of a PL mid or or Juggernaut mid when they have an Earth Spirit. This happens a lot in the Chinese rank where they pick PL or PL against Bounty Hunter and Earth Spirit if opponent has it. You play aggressive all the time and then just make sure you save the save the doppelganger and like, get out and stuff like that. And similar for the Juggernaut, you can just spin out of the problem all the time. Go. Dater Tormentor making its way to the bottom lane to help out Sam H against this uh, harassment duo of the Earth Spirit and Wisp. Oh, smart uh, control by Sa Savior and then bringing back the two creeps. And P is actually going for the uh, X. Okay. I guess we'll see how it goes for him. He already making the most of the limited shared regen that he had. One of his ironwood branches. Interesting, like, AU still hasn't plenty of a single ward on. He's carrying two uh, uh, observer wards right now. Maybe he didn't have enough time to use it, I guess. I, I mean, if I imagine if they're rotating for runes, 
Oh, Jesus. Q while actually dropping pretty low at the bottom lane. If they're rotating for um, the runes, rather, every two minutes, and then they're, they know the risk is always bottom, they don't really have to worry about uh, early vision, I guess. Get to that. Two minute rune is going to be a bounty. Arcane rune up in the top lane. So the pause comes out. I think uh, after the past year, like some problems with uh, auto attack with the creeps and so on. Like I had that kind of problem, and I think that's what he's having Chen right now. So it's a problem. Twelve and five against seven and four of MP Zimber. I think, yeah, he, he picked this lane, like, doing this matchup, he... I'm sure he... He's a master of this matchup, so... He drafted it again. Did he win the game? Uh, yeah, I think so. Well, very smart pull from Febby. I also like to see, I watched uh, one of their matches against Mineski was, uh, it felt like it was a full secret about trap where they uh, they repeatedly picked up Doom. Oh, the slow misses, Sam H should be able to get away because of that one. They kick him backwards, but got to result in any. Oh, the problem is, uh, oh, even though Chen isn't really farming, I, I guess, but like AU, AUI style or the like Puppy style, they would have a much higher, higher level right now, but... Uh, Chen is like just farming in the jungle, and then these two supports are just trying to deal with uh, Slaughter right now, which he is still level 3, where Darkseer is level 4. It's gonna be kind of a problem where they, the supports level will kind of suffer, because IO one's really fast level 6. Early smoke here for the Vengeance Spirit and AU's Chen. They know rotation. that these two supports have been trying to go on the sword arc continuously, and they're probably going for that four minute rune. TNC, they're gonna try and collide on Sevi here. Perfect time. They'll catch him in with the initial stun. Follow this up. Sam H not hitting the crush, but it doesn't seem to matter. They'll be able to lock him down with the troll. Right click him anyway. Looks like MP with a haste rune that he picked up is still gonna try and get some counter kills here. Runs into AU, but on the right hand side, QO has already been gone on. Dodged a uh, blast there. AU. It is still going to go down despite missing the rolling boulder. But that was, I think, well worth it for TNC. They got a kill on Bebby, traded support for a support, but it forced the rotation from MP in the process. Well, MP can't do any, anything to uh, the Dragon, uh, so uh, I think it's a really smart idea to rotate on and make a play. <laughs> A, uh... We don't have any stacks for QO. Assuming he's still gonna go with that helmet dominate. Uh, Sven usually does really well against, uh... Well, not in general, because when he uses Omni Slash, he just uses the War Cry. Then a lot of damages are negated. Because he goes Senja and Yasha, the, like, if he... Names the dragon while he spins, like you can, can do a lot of damage. So. The hero matchup for MVP is pretty good against TNC in general, but TNC, like, uh, TNC can do really well in the early laning phase. And MVP Phoenix just needs to be careful of that. That and then this can, game can go well for MVP Phoenix. Bottom rune, they're contesting for it. Trying to anyway, Sam H. For the stun, but Dubu and MP are here. Oh, the stun's gonna miss, but they've already managed to control Sam H enough with cold snap that he will end up going down to the Axie Invis. Well, meanwhile, on top lane, they've rotated over to catch for Rev while he was jungling. They've got Omni Slash. This should be a free kill on Rev. My finest work. Nice rotations on both sides. 
I really like the read by TNC to um, glide on Febby at the four minute mark on that rune. And also catching the Darkseer while he was jungling. Smart rotation. Thicker and the Phoenix can get huge advantage if uh, Q was just goes, to, goes into the jungle and pulls Febby as level 6. And after they get level 6, they a lot of plays on the map. MH is being fed a lot of experience with uh, this bottom lane constantly pushing into his tower. They're trying to trying to push him back as much as much as possible, but it's just one well, of the problem why his water disappeared is because it's really hard for him to farm farm and compared to before he he's got already 23 CS. But despite that, like he's playing really well, and then he already has level six. I guess enough sustain items right now. Centaur Conqueror is there to start stacking up the Ancients. We'll see if TND has an appropriate response to it. TNC already placed the Observer Ward ready and they, they're gonna know the stack's gonna happen. Well, this ward is also very smart to drop down the Darkseer, I guess. And I feel like it's you should always block the, the Ancient stack, though. Even if you have Vision, then just clear through it too quickly. Oh, the stack is going to be stolen by Juggernaut and Brook's not going to be happy. But th that kind of gives a oh, pickle smoke. It might give it away, but they might expect this Dyer's ward, you know? This is typically the, the offlane Dyer's ward, but they put that one, the other one. Fallen. This is very smart for patient. Tornado. Uh, missing the silence, which will allow the OD to imprison himself. I'm sure he's still gonna die, but he might actually kill Forever in the process. Oh, so close! Did he? Running in, he has the spin, has Omni Slash, and make sure to get that kill. Still has the spin ready to go as a fallback. Or, I mean, who will miss uh, all those three spells there, so. Yeah, and he misses another one, I'm trying to go on Tiki. If they actually had the slow, they might have actually killed Tiki. In fact, they still might! Oh, barely! He knows he can go far enough. He still has the Tornado ready to go. Might try and find some space for Dubu, or he's just gonna right click AU and see, see you later. Doesn't matter though. Potential Spirit with the turnaround, they will be able to get at least the kill on the Invoker for that check. That's gonna be well worth it. Meanwhile, the bottom lane, they're actually gonna go on a Sam H here with the Spirit. They have enough damage to be able to get that kill. Uh, I think I heard uh, Dubu is sick or something. That might oh, really? be. Yeah. He's got an eye problem or something. I heard it in the group chat of MVP. Okay. Because I know he usually doesn't. Like he's really good with uh, Earth Spirit in general. Yeah. Presuming once that hero came out, he was just like spamming it away. I, I know for a fact that he played Earth Spirit to hit 7k until uh, yeah. a long time ago with their one and his 7k. Hey, back when Earth Spirit was super OP. Yep. Then just be a strong hero. But then you could kill the hero with the uh, third spell. Yeah, that, that was. Disgusting. Oh, that was a frustrating time to play Dota. It was. <laughs> Maybe he's perfectly pinging out the... Out of ward will reveal it as soon as down that tree. Place him there. Nice. So we'll smoke from uh, Dubu to... Things happen or... Or, or, or Devar, but he's not level 6 yet. I don't think he can kill him. They need another people to rotate. We're gonna try with the IN shell. He misses the silence oh. once again. They have to relocate though. Go on the top of the kick. Not even needed. He's gonna hold off. And take the last hit. They're gonna actually gonna be able to catch AU, it looks like as well. QO gonna run him down without the help of Bevy as he gets surged up. Takes the chest. Meanwhile, Dooku's dishing out a lot of damage on the TV. He gets off the spin just ahead of that tornado. 
he's still gonna try and run down the vengeful spirit, it looks like. Swap, pulling him back under power range with the Omni Slash, plus the amplified damage. They quickly get that kill, and Winter G may still be able to get out. The spirit takes him down, but it costs the Wisp his life. Oh, underneath the tier one power already taking some damage for us. Doesn't have much of a safe grace here. The surge is up, but it's too late to actually be able to save him as the bat came out from Sam H. Right body block for Ev. It comes out from Dubu, slowing down these heroes. Rev is now gonna be forced to play around the wall. It's a little bit of distance, still gonna be chased down by Sam H. And they've got the spin as well. Rev not gonna make it out alive. Great fight there for TNC. It looked great for a PP Phoenix from the at the beginning, but then it went terribly wrong there. They find this horde. Finally. Finally they get it. So they start stacking up again. MP is going for the Midas, so... I guess this kind of became the standard where Invoker after... Even you're a Vex Invoker, like, you used to go Orchid. Now, like, because the level is so important and you don't want to fall off, a lot of Invokers just go for Midas after the urn. Folk from the Ventral Spirit gets an aggressive ward down, but Febby spotted the rotation, so... He not actually work. Yep, another Radiant relocate ready to go, and that's why attack. we're gonna see a smoke gank from Dubu and MP. Blink Dagger picked up already. 13 minutes in. This is gonna be Dyer's huge. Tower is under attack. definitely had a great time. Lane and out. Rotations have beat off pretty damn. Kill uses his ult. <laughs> Arms up the triple stack, not that much farm gain. Well, this is like kind of not standard for Sven. It's like uh, he has three points in Stormhammer, especially because you're against Slaughter, you want to have four points in Warcry. But I guess Kill is just doing his Kill things. Dyer's top tower is under like attack. Like the SNY build for him. Woody has finished up these jangles as well. Stop should be a blink dagger, right? Yeah. Maybe. Blink dagger or uh, a a toss, but it really depends on the player's preference. They yes. might smoke to Roche right now. Yeah. It's at that point though, Dubu really starts playing better at the Earth Spirit. They can't afford to miss silences or kicks. Uh, the Blink Dagger OG. Oh, Blink Dagger on a Juggernaut game. Oh, oh nice yes, kick yes. from Dubu. Great response by him that spoils the four man smoke gank here from TNC. They're not going to catch anybody out of this. MP uh, finished up his Midas as well. They're going to go straight for Roshan here. MP has backed up to complete his Midas, but it means he's going to be late for this Roshan fight. I think they know, but I think they're late already. Yeah. But what do you think the other map? Let's go back to the base. Maybe Chen send him back? Yep. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Echo almost complete for AU. I really like TNC where like they're giving the ages to Slaughter because they know he's the one going to go into the first and start the team fight and probably going to die. Yeah. It's like uh, usually you give it give the ages to like Juggernaut or OD because they're usually the carry players and they want the ages. But yeah, this is I think this is the next level and like really good play for TNC. Dyer's structures are fortified. See if it pays off, they're rotating up to the top lane where QO is trying to push down the tier one. He's actually in the deep bottom there. MP is waiting there, but there's no one there. Dyer's top tower is under attack. Oh, the, the stun misses a bit. Could have been uh, dead uh, dark scare if he landed the stun there. Soldier's fortune. 
Ancients coming out. They still need to address this, uh... This ancient stack, they haven't blocked it since the time. Dyer's bottom it's already back up to a uh, quad stack. I, I like uh, T he has a blink decker, but I think he usually goes for drums and like a battery after uh, going a different build where he wants to evolve into T much more with the blink blink decker. But MPP is smartly dodging the team fights and. Trying to get as bad as possible. Fortified. He needs to be careful. MH trying to go on MP, but doesn't actually manage to close the distance. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. Q well, was putting a lot of pressure at the bottom lane. Pet B to fall back on. Relocate out just in case. Dyer's top tower Gonna go straight to the top tower, try and take that one through the back door. Dyer's Damage will be able to get the stun onto Febby. Febby, who is amped up, is probably gonna be dying here towards the bottom lane. He's just gonna leave QO to try and take out Sam H. Doesn't quite get that kill. And it will be Febby dying at bottom. Well, oh, this is definitely worth it for MVP though. They're making uh, teams run around and try to fully utilize their agents timing right now. He's dodged there from the OD, keeps his mana intact. And will also be able to complete his Blink Dagger if he wants it. That is a rod of Atos, but I feel like Blink is significant. Radiance mid Meanwhile, AU, he's not making it out alive. Juggernaut is coming in though, and they can actually turn this one around. TD does get hit by the ultimate there from Dubu, but it doesn't matter. The Omni Slash level 2 cleans up the invoker and brings Duke down to half health. Please slash down. There was Arcane with the uh, Omni Slash as well, so the cooldown is not going to be uh, so long either. Dicker. You well, gotta be careful. You don't have a relocate out this time around. Does get bashed up. Duo falls. And the vacuum may actually swap Brett back in. Trying to stall up his retreat for Raven. Maybe his tether was on full for one sec. Couldn't help Q at all. Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. See this giant stack makes it imperative for TNC to try and take some control. Tier one, start. Use some aggressive wards off of this. Wow. AU has a Midas, so he's gonna be pretty impactful in the. The late game as well as a Chen. He's farming a lot and he's he just he's uh, 150 gold away from the back as well. He doesn't have much damage other than Kyo now, and like the Earth Spirit does a lot of AOE damage, but Chen's mech and his heal will negate a lot of that. So. Hopefully they can burst someone down with Kyo's blink dagger that he just picked up. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Sure to love the wild wing. Oh, wild wing at the top lane. Warf's almost completed his mech as uh, the blink dagger is also do a combo play, I guess now. With uh, Sven stun and damage with Dark Sears vacuum and wall. Yeah, they're gonna need a uh, good initiation here because right now either the Juggernaut or the OD are possibly both that's gonna destroy them in a team fight. Oh, so nice they need the uh, illusion beat. Dyer's top top is under attack. Bo and Bevy will keep out the bottom lane. Well, MVP Phoenix, I believe, are going for a three-man smoke in the enemy jungle. Except for the part where they don't have smoke. Is it on cooldown? They... Yeah, he's on cooldown for one minute. Well, Actually, early smoke lot, usage. 
Yeah, that actually happens a lot in company. We're like, oh, let's smoke, let's smoke, and then we just gather here and like, oh, smoke some cooldown for another wolf, and then, yeah. Not a. Uh, the cost of the those early smoke rotations. AP Phoenix didn't Dying actually get themselves that far ahead. Oh, gonna go for the tier two. Radiance MH. Bevy. Bevy needs an escape. Dagger Dyer's will offer him the tether out. Thanks, Sam H. Still wants to go for this one to relocate out. Not in time. Bevy going to be nailed by this crush. Now TD blinks straight in and stays on Bevy. He's still got a tether to the side. Actually, oh, a big hit there with the cleave. They've almost managed to finish up Sam H. Bevy will jump over to the invoker now with a kick landing on TD. He's completely burned out of mana. While Sam H. gets pulled back in with the magnetize, he does end up going down and can't even get the kill on Bevy. What a great turnaround there from MVP Phoenix. Well, six play from Febby, baiting them in and then bringing out to Volker. I thought that he was just gonna escape and tether to the Sven and escape out, but he baited them in and then it was a really good play from Febby. They get the, uh, no, they're not actually denied the power bottom, so. It has been one significant downside. QO well about to get another big jump up in net worth with Ancient Stack he's got going on. And he can complete the the BKB if he wants. I actually don't like getting BKB so early because of the number of the charges going on. But okay. Yeah, but it's going just for BKB. Especially when you go... Yeah. Go ahead, sorry. Especially when you have worth to kind of help you out. You Mobile way was uh, also the dark here. I usually just prefer just moon shards a lot of them. Uh, BKB can be wrong. Hey you, if Q blinks up, find him. Q was just trying to farm there, but farm was one of the heroes to farm. Goes <laughs> from farming creeps to farming heroes. Juggernaut now has the Omni Slash Febby. I don't think he's seen that yet, but uh, if he plans on going the Ghost Scepter, he'll quickly find that that's not going to be all that operable. Juggernaut. It's still really good, though, against both OD and Jug, so well worth uh, being. I'll take Dyer's top tower is under attack. I... I... I'm... I wonder what the uh, Invoker will go for next. Uh, I guess just the Agnes Scepter. I think that's, I guess, just the uh, normal item build for Chris. Dyer's top tower has fallen. They're hunting uh, top right now. They use this one to go for it. Heavy with the relocate, oh. but Sam H locked on. Manages to get another crush there. Beast relocate has stopped. QO is still going to be able to get the BKB and jump out. Febby's just trying to buy time at this point. Die eventually. But that's also the fresh BKB used. Fuel, the second BKB. I don't think that's the way you want to use your first BKB, but... Radiant's sure. top tower is under attack. Radiant structures are fortified. That was a really good play from Sam Ace, though. Good. Make the initiation here. So he's got to hurry up. The tier one's already down. Kiwo trying to make his jump to get a stun out, but doesn't happen. Invoker has a ghost sensor as well. Up there's all around, man. Q oh, strength is popped by QO, thinking he's gonna be able to get a fight here, but 
looks like that's gonna be the case. Or maybe he'll get a pick off. He, he thinks about turning around. Oh, Victor! He's actually gonna be sent back just in time. The Omni Slash straight onto Q won't isn't enough to kill him, but he does get pretty close. T he not gonna be able to pursue. Q is actually gonna turn things around now with rest. Last remaining bit of his god strength, but T he locks onto him almost immediately. Good relocate out there from Heavy. He's gonna be able to save this Sven, but Dubu's not gonna be nearly as lucky. Him as well as Rev end up going down. Looks like MP is gonna be caught as well. That's a three hero exchange. Fifth Heavy. Being the last one to die in that fight. What a bad fight. In fact, QO, oh my god. Actually been caught here in the mid lane. He does not have EKB. I'm pretty sure he just straight up. Maybe? Blink? Slarda is chasing him. Sam H, he just ran out of his sprint. Bottom tower is under attack. It's like QO is away. The but Roshan had just away. spawned, so T TNC is still in a great position. Nice. Oh, the Woody had a fish on the as well, so that's why I need to watch it. There's a complete, absolutely no control for you know MVP side if uh, you turn on the BKB. They don't have any spells that goes through the BKB right now. Farm is relatively even at worth uh, across the board, but that's not a good sign for MVP Phoenix. I would. The Sven. I almost feel like Sven when he's got these ancient attacks is like Alchemist Light, you know. Just because you're expecting him to be ahead of everyone else in net worth. So the overall net worth is even. I, I think it's usually not favorable for the team that has been. And uh, Slara is very close to BKB right now, and then yeah, he's just gonna run around in the team fight making chaos. Yeah, so. It's gonna be the worst one for MVP. Usually, MVP like, doesn't play this kind of play style. Like, they. Like, so you want to the team fights and they are the one who always always wants to fight but I think games are getting static uh, I think it's like a lot where they're playing just passive right now. Oh, did you jump on a TD? You're trying to pop him in a nation, but does get hit by the Arisen. Now Raven is going to be the target instead. Does get swapped aside too. We still manage to hit him with the boulder though. Slowing Raven down almost enough for QO to be able to get that kill. The Magnetite is staying on Raven. It takes him again while he misses the stun. Dubo just needs one more, and it looks like Raven might actually take out here. Gets an extra one in Prisman. Does provide the save here. Meanwhile, on the left hand side, it looks like Raven still goes down. Gets picked up by Dubu. MP's trying to get away from the Vengeful Spirit while Raven is stuck inside the trees against Tiki. Febby's also going to be dying here. He's MH on top of the wall, but it's still not enough to be able to get that kill. MP did get away, but they lost their spend, the big name, in MVP Phoenix. Plus, Tiki managed to keep his Aegis intact. Radiant's middle tower is under attack. A good attack. save from uh, TNC. Just to get both right. They made like spend like chase so much because of it. It just felt like that was uh, fundamentally like, the, what, it, like fundamentally bad plan from QO to go for the the juggernaut, got his strength, and uh, who had the agents anyway. He should be going on OD or like le at least letting someone else start the fight. Like, yeah. he comes out. He's just gonna spin and uh, not quite finishing up the tower. Tinch is looking very strong right now. And so does Fortune. Team to 22. NT's up by 5k. 5k, 5 experience. They still have that Aegis for another 2 minutes, so they can actually force another fight if they want. To. Uh, Dyer's Probably need to wait until the Omni Slash is good to go. That's in second. Man, they, did they win that last fight? Yeah, without even dropping the OD ultimate? Nope. OD just stole a lot of time still. It's running away. So, uh, tension of Earth Spirit and the extent for like 10 seconds while their teams were doing full damage. Well, they're gonna finish the Eye of Scotty. How the... How are they gonna kill him? <laughs> it's like 2k HP. 
a lot of saves from his teammates. Full swap and that's during Prisma. But I think MVK, MVK still always rely on the back wall combo or pump combo end of the game. Oh, he used pump. I was like watching uh, Chen and I was like. Oh, he's gonna go for Agnim Setter. I just saw him pick up the point booster, but actually his Agnim Setter was all done. Thanks to his hide Round complete. Good job there by TE, stopping the surge with a quick refusal. He will still gonna try and jump Tiki here, and he will have the element surprise or not. He's going straight for Raven, but the BKB already goes down. QO unable to get the direct damage onto Raven to stop him. And now Raven's gonna be able to come back in, trying to stop Febby from going out and relocate his team. Raven turns on QO, finishes him off with a big crit from Tiki, plus the amp damage. And he's not getting away, not so quickly. And he Whoa! Oh, the never mind. Good relocate save there from Febby. Oh, is he really gonna try and save Benny here? Oh my god, that was not play. Okay, well, it's well, like the body well, At least Benny saved, but how, how did he? Did he just like come back and TP? They were chasing for uh, more than just TP out. I guess that's for play. Radiant's middle bags are under attack. MP pulls himself. Dust is a bit too late, or maybe not. They managed to get the purge onto him. TE just dishes out so much damage. Swap back. Bebby gonna be caught as well. Oh, the defusal they're doing so much. Yeah, I just, it's gotten them so many extra kills. Radiant's middle barracks are under TNT. Radiant's middle barracks. They are trouncing MVP Phoenix. We're just not having a great day so far. Back they go. TNT. Still tier 2 towers up on the side lane, so... He has a 3k gold again. Oh. Yep. Top lead uh, a Manta at this point. You can go for Manta or Butterfly or Bash or anything. Like anything that can control uh, Q while his BKB will be better, so... I'll go for Butterfly or Bash right now. He's... Never mind, this she was card. Generation. Gonna be uh, Raven's next pickup in another. MP is desperate for a pickup. Hunter on the map and go swap, hoping to be able to find somebody. Uh, I don't. Phoenix yeah. need multiple picks to bring back. I've seen MP play Invoker a lot, and he usually goes for Acne Scepter, but the School Scepter is not paying off at all. No? He's damaged. Oh, well, that's uh, and just hand delivered there. The QO. Maybe one more. He's find a gem. the eventual spirit. Oh, that's a big gem. Getting for stuff. That one. Will, Debbie, go pick that one up. Oh, no, the relocate gem. up. They're not going to get the gem. All right. Oh. They, they can still go back for it. Or not. The, the, the chicken was it. right there. Uh, yep. Because they were in a losing position, the gem would have been huge. Like the gem will like hold his vision, all their vision. If you take the gem, because there's a cooldown on the dire side, just have the control for a while. The Shiva's card is almost done for our OD as well. He's just 400 gold away. And he is still thinking of what to buy, I guess. He's save up 4k gold right now. What about QO? You think he should play Tannic? Or, uh... He needs to find, uh, find a way to make himself tanky. I really like Butterfly on uh, spend a lot of times, but especially when they have two right clickers. But it's not the stage yet. Usually you get a satanic, wound shard, and then sell the sand and yasha for the butterfly. Oh, 
They're going oh, for... Oh, kickoff on Hee would be huge. They get the stun. Hee -he will die. Great pickoff. They're going to be able to go for more here. The relocate forward doesn't quite catch an important kill, but they will get the Vengeful Spirit. More forward, a little bit more. QO, pop of the BKB. will go for AU, who gets imprisoned up and saved. On the damage, they manage to silence him up when he pops his feet. They manage to get the stun, allowing Raven the space to be able to drop the ultimate QO. Now just being deleted here by Raven. Gonna look for a little bit more. Damage gets the pick off onto Perez, stopping his TP out. That should be a secondary kill here. A centaur stun actually allows MP to dish out the damage to almost kill Damage, but it's still not enough. Now MP is gonna be the next one who dies. Rampage for Raven. QO again. Going too deep. Just pick up the Shiva Scarred and Radiant's now he has two kills under attack. And Roshi is gonna be up soon. Just in a few seconds. Fortune. I started off with really great pick off, but it's a little too far. Not really going anywhere anymore. He spent his gold and he picked up the shark right now. Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. Oh, do you see the effect? Dodi, that uh... Oh, and Radiant the Frenzy? Frenzy, yeah. Oh, easy uh, pick off. Pretty nice upgrade. They get the shooter too, get a pick off on the Earth Spirit. All the while doing Roshan. He is going to drop for it unless he drops something. He drops Yashtra for it. Radiant's top tower is under attack. DNC, they can't really ask for a much bigger lead than this. All they have to do is go successful high ground uh, one more time, and the game is pretty much going back to them. Yep. Oh. They have a Yasha in the Rosh pit, and they don't have a chicken to pick it up, so they just, they just left it there. <laughs> The expensive item to just be in the rush pit right now. Maybe Sindar is almost done for the slaughter as well. I guess why not? But it actually doesn't do much against Spanish <laughs> It actually does a lot of uh defense against the negative armor. If you have a lot of negative armor, the Crimson Guard does a lot. You just uh, roll a lot of damage just to expand, like it does I wish he had gone AC and... Yeah. AC or Lotus Orb or anything would have been good. Even with the full step would have been actually good too. Say so I have a lot of save and one more on top of that. It'd be really hard for them to do anything. It'll be really hard for MVP Phoenix to kill this Juggernaut now that he's got uh, the Butterfly ready to go, and obviously, no MKBs on the side of MVP. I don't think Sven can afford to get it. He needs to get Butterfly himself, and... Well, no, I, I can have that yeah. Satanic. He went for the Moon Shard instead. Game is looking tough for peak. TNC are just growing more and more of an advantage. Last five or ten minutes. OD is 4k gold as well. Already ingredients complete for you. Did sight the vice, so now our OD can both blink Shiva's and can sight the vice. Just the fact down. that he uses sanity clips in the team fight is gonna demolish a lot of the MVP's heroes because he has such a high intelligence right now. To the side of vice and post the Shiva's card. That is going to kind of buy time with the meteor. Not gonna stop Chen's ancient creeps from pushing forward. Mm -hmm. 
Tier 3 towers just being chomped out by the Juggernaut. MVP Phoenix have yet to find their opening for an initiation. This is playing really smart right now. They don't need to risk anything, they just need to have Juggernaut hit the front line and then... Yeah, they just need to back off because Q just uses uh, ulti and just wait it out and then go back. They don't need to risk. DNC back up to the top area while they wait for Bo to wear himself out. Going all the way back? Please don't, TNC, you can end this game. Maybe they're just waiting for the healing ward and then go back in. This. Funny, even after all this time, Sven is still top of the network. <laughs> I guess so. Pretty significant margin, too. All TNC needs to do is not group up with the world back here. They get a pretty decent combination there. Unfortunately, God Strength isn't up, and now it's really showing to the sight of ice on QL. It finally gets off the BKB, but Raven's already stolen enough intelligence to blow up Fetty. QL's gonna have to make it back to the fountain alone, but he won't even make it that far. A stun magic missile plus CD Blake and Ford looks like they've got MP as well. Stun comes out, turn around, good meteor deafening blast, but Raven only takes a bit of damage. This MVP Phoenix just don't seem to have the offense to be able to push TNC fully out. Trying to keep on going since magnetized, but now the Omni Flash gun and start bouncing around. Lanes on to MP, almost finishing him off solo there. Instead, it gets the Dark Seer. MP will be cleaned up and the Vengeful Spirit instead. That's two heroes down with no buyback. And surely MVP Phoenix realized this is game over. Uh -huh. MVP Phoenix seems really impatient right, impatient right now. But the uh, really good play from TNC as well, like the team fight execution from the TNC was really good and game. Yeah, TNC started off this series pretty damn big. Taking down to MVP Phoenix, who they lost to last time around in, uh, in a series of 2-1. to one. So TNC might just be our finalist to face up against Fnatic. We'll have to see as game number two will be on its way.